Hello, my friends. Welcome to Aspen Grove for July 18th, 2021. Hey, I hope that as you're gathering together in homes or as you're sitting down to watch this on YouTube, that you'll be experiencing the presence of God. Not only the presence of God, but the nearness of Jesus. And not only the nearness of Jesus, but the interaction with the Holy Spirit. All of these are really what we mean when we talk about experiencing the presence of God. I just want to bless you this morning as you gather in. I'd love to pray with you. We'll start our time out with that, move us into some worship. So with that, let's go ahead and just turn our affections, turn our attention. Try to dial in a little bit here, take a few deep breaths, and just position yourself to receive and also to extend in response your heart of worship. So Jesus, we receive from you now because you're the initiator of love. You're the initiator of all good things. You're the one who meets our deepest longings. Lord, we thank you that we belong to you. We thank you that we are significant in your eyes. We thank you that in you we have purpose. We thank you that in you, Jesus, and by your grace, we are secure. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for all the ways that you understand us. Lord, thank you for meeting all of our deep, deep needs. And Lord, as we extend ourselves through conversation here today, I thank you that we get to represent you and receive from you through each other. And so, Lord, thank you for community. Thank you for all the ways that you're moving in and through this community. And Lord, we give you this time. We consecrate it unto you. We declare that it's holy because you are here. You're in the center of everything that we want to say and do and be about today. So to you be the glory, Jesus. Amen.
Thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are way, way maker. You are our healer. We thank you for your promises, God.
All right. I would like to read a passage out of Revelation. If you recall, at the end of last year, I mentioned that I was going to spend 2021 kind of digging into the book of Revelation. And so I thought I would read Revelation chapter 5. And so if you would just kind of settle in and just listen, I'll go ahead and read this. I saw that the one seated on the throne was holding in his right hand an unopened scroll with writing on the inside and on the outside, and it was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw an incredibly powerful angel proclaiming with a great loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and able to break its seven seals. But no person could be found, living or dead, in all creation. No one was worthy to open the scroll and read its contents. So I broke down weeping with intense sorrow, because there was found no one worthy to break open the scroll and read its contents. Then one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look, the mighty lion of Judah's tribe, the root of David, he has conquered. He is the worthy one who can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a young lamb standing before the throne, encircled by four living creatures and the 24 elders. He appeared to have been slaughtered, but was now alive. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out to the ends of the earth. I saw the young lamb approach the throne and take the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat there. And when the 24 elders and the four living creatures saw the lamb had taken the scroll, they fell face down at the feet of the lamb and worshipped him. Each of them had a harp and a golden bowl brimming full of sweet, fragrant incense, which are the prayers of God's holy lovers. And they were all singing this new song of the praise to the Lamb. Because you were slaughtered for us, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Your blood was the price paid to redeem us. You purchased us to bring us to God out of every tribe, language, people group, and nation. You have chosen us to serve our God and formed us into a kingdom of priests who reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of myriads of angels circling around the throne, as well as the voices of living creatures and the elders, myriads and myriads. And as I watched, all of them were singing with thunderous voices. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb, who was slaughtered to receive great power and might, wealth and wisdom and honor, glory and praise. Then every living being joined in the angelic choir, every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth and in the sea, and everything in them were worshiping with one voice, saying praise, honor, glory, and dominion to the God enthroned and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures responded, Amen. And the 24 elders threw themselves face down to the ground and worshiped. Bless you this morning. Hey gang. Okay, so before we jump into the encouragement here, let me just make an announcement about next week. Next week we're going to be meeting at the regular time, 10 o'clock here at Emmaus Fellowship in person. And we're going to have an extended time of worship. And in that extended time of worship, we're going to be having communion. We're also going to be creating some space for you to share anything that the Lord might be encouraging you with or want 
wants you to share to the body, uh, whether that's a word of encouragement through the scripture or a prophetic word, or if there's some word of knowledge where you would feel the Lord would want to be ministering to some specific needs within our fellowship, we want to create some space for that, okay? So that's going to be super fun. And it's going to end with a time of fellowship and potluck downstairs. So be sure and bring some food to share, and we will enjoy all of that together. So that's next week. All right. So one of the things that we're going to be doing here over the next, oh, six weeks or so, is anytime we have an Aspen Grove, I'm going to be referring to the previous week's message or the previous week's series of events, whatever that might be. And so, for example, today, I'm going to be referring to some things that Brian Finnamore shared uh, last week. And there's a couple of reasons why we're going to be doing this. Uh, more details to come on that. But I think that one of the things that I, I want to share is that I'm not going to be echoing the message, okay, that Brian brought. It was amazing. I want to encourage you that if you have not listened to that, that you can go to our Facebook page, Emmaus Fellowship Facebook page, and you can watch the archived live streaming. You can fast forward that to Brian's teachings or you can watch the whole thing. It's up to you. Um, not quite sure when the podcast will be up uh, with the Weddells moving to Arkansas. Um, we're giving Ben some time just to get his uh, his ground, you know, just to get his bearings where, where he's at and, and uh, get his footing there. So with that, uh, we'll have that podcast up hopefully in the next few weeks. But anyway, that being said, Immediately, you could watch it on our Facebook Live archive uh, on our Facebook page. So that being said, I'm not going to jump right into echoing everything he said, but man, it was good. It's always so good, isn't it, when when our friend Brian comes and shares and ministers, gives encouraging words afterwards, prophetic words, words of knowledge, praying for the sick, things like that. Um, dear, dear friend. Now, at the heart of what Brian was sharing, for those of you who didn't hear, I'll kind of try to encapsulate the gist of it. Uh, it had to do with the fact that there was there's a, a goodness of God that is like a plane of existence that we are invited to be a part of and that we can have assurance and confidence to know that God is capable, not only capable, but desires to turn everything that we go through into good. Even the trials, the tribulations, the difficulties that we face um, as human beings, where we want to try to escape them, where we want to try to alleviate as much pain and suffering, uh, God is actually like, hey, you know what? This is actually going to be good for you. Like, I'm going to actually turn this into something that's good for you. And... Uh, so uh, often we're asking God to alleviate our challenges in life and what God tends to do in, instead of alleviating them is giving us the grace to move through them. And one of the graces that God gives to us in moving through difficult times is intimacy with him and a deeper understanding of our own makeup and our own, uh, maybe even our own dysfunctions, you know, as they kind of pop up every time that we're stressed in a certain way, right? And that's his grace. That's his mercy to let that stuff rise to the surface and, and uh, so that we can, we can not only quote unquote deal with it, it's not about dealing with it as much as is it about bringing it to Jesus in that place of intimacy and trusting that he would bring healing to us. You know, the work that we have to do in this life, um, we have a couple of mindsets around that. One time uh, we might be thinking, well, I have a lot of work to do to get my act together. Um, and yeah, maybe. But the work really is to believe. The work really is to receive. And so it's not enough that we would kick ourselves into a gear of... Um, what would that be like behavior modification and all of that? It's really, that's, that's a self-reliance. That's a self-righteousness. Uh, whereas Jesus would be saying to us, look, I have done everything you need. 
and I give you everything you need for life and godliness. I give you healing and wholeness and restoration. I give all that to you. And it doesn't come by you striving harder, working harder. It comes by you receiving the grace that's available for you. So isn't that fun? So if you're going through a hard time and you're asking God to alleviate it, that's okay. You can keep asking that. But maybe part of the alleviation is a reframing it in, in the ways that you feel and think and the ways that you approach it. Uh, that might be part of the alleviation. Not just that the circumstances would stop, but that you would have different mindsets and attitudes. You have to know that when I came back from Alaska after being in that immense space, that there were some things about my world that felt small. And that seems right, okay? But it's not that I feel like um, my situation, my lifestyle, my relationships are small as much as I felt like my ways of thinking were small. And so you have to know that through the, the month of July, I've been dedicating some time to just meet with the Lord and ask Him, where am I small-minded? Because He wants to expand. Because if I'm small-minded, I'm focused on the temporal things, whereas the goodness of God exists in the realm of the unseen world of God's kingdom. Because He is the King of that kingdom, and His goodness reigns and rules in that space. Uh, that's why I really loved uh, reading Revelation 5 here this morning because um, it's interesting, isn't it? When John was weeping because he assumed that there was no one worthy to open the scroll, the elder said, look, there is um, a lion from the tribe of Judah. There's a root of David. There's a conqueror. Look, there's a conqueror. He's a lion and when John looked, what did he see? He saw a lamb that was slain. That's not a mind bender. Um, the realm of God's kingdom does not exist in, under the same um, rules of engagement, I guess, as the world. The world is looking for the hero. The world looks for someone who has... Uh, conquered, achieved, and has dominated, I guess, is probably a good word. And Jesus says, I am all of that. And it came through what? It came through humility. And it came through the sacrifice of laying his life down for you and I. And so I love that because what it does is it brings a contrast to the realms of life that we can exist in. We can exist in a small world, the temporal world, the world that is actually under the influence of powers and principalities that are not godly, or we can fix our eyes on the things above. We can fix our eyes on the goodness of God. We can fix our eyes on the kingdom of God that exists not through domination, not through fear and manipulation and exploitation and all of the things that the world functions under and is desperately in need of a hero and is looking for that hero constantly. Um, we, we still have, for, for better or for worse, we have um, this tug of war that happens, don't we? I mean, we either fix our eyes on the things of the world or we fix our eyes on the things of God. And when you fix your eyes on the things of God, my goodness, it changes everything. It absolutely changes everything. Um, and eventually what it will change is our attitudes and our behaviors uh, because we do not have to function the w in the ways of the world. We do not have to manipulate. We do not have to exploit we do not have to use fear to motivate people. We do not have to do any of those things because we have an example in Jesus who is the conqueror, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is the king of glory and sacrificial love is what ushered all of that in. And so 
we get to be that. We get to have attitudes then that are self-sacrificing for the sake of others, that are honoring to other people, that prefer other people, that, um, you know, that just function through humility. So that's a powerful thing. So anyway, that being said, when Brian was sharing last week, he talked about the love of God. You know this is a gift, right? Everything that I'm describing about God's kingdom is a gift to you and I, and it's a gift that's motivated out of love. And there's absolutely nothing that can separate you from the love of God. I mean, one of the passages that Brian shared for us um, is in Romans 8. Now, we, we know Romans 8. It's a victorious chapter. It's so encouraging for us. If you haven't read it in a while, my goodness, I would encourage you to read it. I mean, but here it is. It's like God is determined to stand with us. And if God is for us, then who can be against us? And we certainly have this amazing encouragement that no one can divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one. Absolutely no one. And so Brian ended it with uh, Romans 8, 38, I believe it was. Uh, So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There's nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ the anointed one. And this is the same Jesus that we were reading about in Revelation 5. This is um, the encouragement this morning is to meditate on, reflect upon, talk about, encourage one another on the magnitude of God's love. Now here's the deal. And Brian said it last week. It's like uh, when you start talking about the love of God, um, you know, it requires, I, I believe honestly, that it requires the spirit of revelation to reveal to us the love of God. It, it requires the spirit of revelation. It's a miraculous thing for us who have been formed in this lower, small-mindedness of the world that has been influenced by hatred and strife and bitterness and all the brokenness and trauma and everything that ensues as a result of that, for us to be brought into an awareness, deep knowing the love of God. And that's why Paul prays, I pray that the roots of your heart, your roots, your soul, would go deep into the soil of God's love. And so there is a process of growing into that, and it's, it's a deepening process. It's a, it's a process that um, takes time, but it's a process that we can be praying for one another, that we can be experiencing that in new ways, deeper, deeper measure, all right? So I bless you with that, and we'll move into some prompts here in just a moment. But with that, I just want to pray because I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like that blessing to release for each one of you, just a deepening awareness and a revelation of the love of God. So Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, would you reveal to us the love of the Father? Would you wean us off of old ways of thinking, small-mindedness when it comes to what does it mean to be loved? What does it mean to experience love and to, to receive it, Lord? So, so many of us have had such limiting examples of that through the humans in our lives, Lord. But And yet, you are encouraging us that we can know it, that it is lavished upon us through you, Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, bring to us a fresh revelation of the love of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. What a beautiful name it is. 
What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Well, we're back with the prompts. Now, of course, you can talk about anything you want, especially related to the love of God. Anything that may have risen up here this morning or something you remember from last week when Brian Fenimore shared. So enjoy that conversation. But really what I'd also love for you to do is let's just stay in that vein of praying for the Spirit of God to reveal to each one of us a deepening understanding of the love of the Father. So I would love if every single person got prayed for. Just bless them, just even in a brief prayer, uh, just that God would begin to deepen our understanding of his love for us and um, then finally some of you are going through some challenging things you've got some troubles that you're navigating through you're asking God to to give the grace to get through challenges and so I would love for you to get some support in that so if you're comfortable sharing details that's fine if not then you can just be asking each other for prayer and I would love for you as a community to be praying for one another that the goodness of God would be revealed in all the circumstances that you find yourself in. Well, with that, I'll leave you. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week at Emmaus for an extended time of worship, for that time of communion, an open mic of encouragement for us to be sharing together, and then for that potluck afterwards. So bring some food to share, and we'll see you next week. God bless you all.